Hi, and welcome to the 101 introduction of the OpenShift Container Platform. My name is Brandon Cox, and I'm a Solutions Architect in Red Hat's North American Public Sector. The purpose of this demo is to give you an introduction to OpenShift's features and concepts and provide a walkthrough, start to finish, of deploying an application. I'll demonstrate automated build processes, rolling deployments, and rollbacks, while providing an overview of auto-scaling and self-healing capabilities. Throughout this demo, I'll use the web interface, but developers and operators have the ability to use a variety of tools to accomplish the same functionality in whatever way suits them best. To get started, I'll log into the platform as a developer. This user has a view of their own workspace, which displays a listing of projects that this user has access to. A project allows a community of users to organize and manage their content in isolation from other communities. My user has been granted access to certain projects, but I'm also allowed to create my own. To start fresh, I'm going to create a new project. The first page I'm directed to is a catalog of the languages, frameworks, and services that are loaded by default into the platform. OpenShift is a completely self-service and polyglot environment that empowers developers to provision and use whatever tool fits their scenario best. This page can be customized by OpenShift admins to include select services that are approved to run in their environment. If you already have an image pre-built in a repository somewhere, you can easily deploy that image as well, and then use OpenShift to manage the deployment and operations of those containers. I have some code in a GitHub repo that is a Java application designed to run on Red Hat's enterprise application platform. I would like to be able to build and run my code on OpenShift in a containerized version of EAP. To start that process, I return back to the catalog and select the appropriate template for the setup that I want to use. Templates are objects loaded into the platform by administrators to standardize builds and deployments for a particular application. Templates can be created and customized to describe the stack that developers should be able to request, allowing developers to then fill in variables such as their code repo and repo branch. When I click Create, a number of OpenShift objects are instantiated, and our build process will kick off. There are a number of different types of builds in OpenShift, but the one that we're running right now is called the Source to Image build. Source to Image is a tool for building reproducible container images. It produces ready-to-run images by injecting application source into a container image and then assembling a new image. The new image is made up of a base image and the compiled source code that have been layered together, and then pushed to the registry where it can then be deployed. Once the process completes, our application deployment is triggered. Since we created a new app from a template, there are a number of objects that have been created automatically for us. First, a build config was created. The build configuration describes triggers for when a new build of an image should be instantiated and the input parameters used to create the image. The build config helps us to know the exact input that was used to create the resulting image for easy replication and traceability. An image stream was also created. An image stream is a pointer that references a container image that resides in the registry. The image stream and its tags allow you to see what images are available and ensure that you're using the specific image you need, even if that image in the registry is to change. Actions can be driven by changes to the image stream. For example, a deployment can be triggered to run if it sees a change to the image stream, which indicates that a new image is available to be deployed. A deployment config was created as well. When a deployment of our image is executed, our application is rolled out as a certain number of replicas, bindings to persistent storage, and other things like environment variables. The template that defines the parameters about how our image should be deployed is called a deployment config. The deployment config can have a horizontal pod autoscaler attached to it. A horizontal pod autoscaler defines how the system should automatically increase or decrease the number of replicas based on metrics. In most applications, components can become unhealthy due to a number of issues. You may encounter temporary connectivity loss, configuration errors, or problems with external dependencies. OpenShift applications have a number of ways to detect and handle unhealthy conditions inside containers. A readiness probe determines if a container is ready to service requests. If the readiness probe fails for a container, the container has its IP address removed from the internal load balancer. A readiness probe is used to signal that even if the container is running, it should not receive any traffic from a proxy. A liveliness probe, on the other hand, checks to see if the container in which it's configured is still running. If the liveliness probe fails, then OpenShift will kill the container and attempt to restart it according to the restart policy. 
A deployment config holds the environment variables that get injected into the pod when they are created. Environment variables can be accessed inside of the container and by the code running inside the container. This way we don't have to hard code system properties, host names, or things that should be stored in environment variables. There are many different ways to trigger a new deployment, and modifying the deployment config is one of them. When I add a new environment variable, the new deployment will start. This deployment config specifies that a rolling deployment will take place. A rolling deployment is one of the methods of deploying new containers or configuration. A rolling deployment allows our application to continue servicing requests without completely taking the system down. It does so by instantiating new pods one by one and waiting until the pod is passing its health checks before adding it to the internal load balancer. Once that pod has fully come online, one of the outdated pods is then shut down. This process repeats until there are only new pods running. This process allows us to roll out new changes and patches to end users without causing an interruption in service, and it does so automatically based on the deployment strategy. OpenShift leverages the Kubernetes concept of a pod, which is one or more containers deployed on a single host. A pod is the smallest compute unit that can be defined, deployed, and managed by OpenShift. Pods are the rough equivalent of a virtual machine to a container. Each pod is allocated its own internal IP address, owns its entire port space, and the containers within the pod share the same access to local storage and networking. Our Java application running inside the container has a similar view as if it was running on its own virtual machine. I have access to the JMX console to be able to view information about the running application server. I can also view the server logs that are being produced by the running application server. I also have access to the terminal that drops me into the running container. From here, I can browse and debug the container depending on my level of access. I can see the version of Java that my application server is using. And I can also echo to the terminal the environment variable that we injected into the pod when we did our deployment. Lots of things can go wrong in any application. If something was to happen inside this container, such as a failure of the Java process, OpenShift will detect the failure immediately via the liveliness probe. OpenShift will see that the container failed and attempt to restart the container immediately. Deployment configs tell us exactly what version of our image is in use and what properties will be injected into our running pods. There are all sorts of things associated with a deployment, from autoscalers to types of persistent storage that we want to map back to our pods. Every time that we make a change and execute a new deployment, the configuration is retained and we have the ability to view the history of all the deployments that have occurred. Since all deployments and builds are retained, we have consistent and repeatable ways to revert. OpenShift exposes the ability to roll back to any snapshot in time of our application with only the click of a button. When we start a rollback, a new deployment is triggered and a new version is created. The deployment follows the same rolling process as before until all the new pods have come online. So if we check out our containers, we can see that the environment variable we entered before is no longer available inside the container. We can move to the environment tab, and we can see that the environment variable has been reverted. It's that simple, no more shutting down apps and no more troubleshooting failed deployments. So we've deployed our application a few times, and the pods that make up our application have been recreated with different IP addresses. If another component was dependent on this application to be up and running through these deployments, how would that component know how to connect to our pods? A Kubernetes service functions as a load balancer of traffic across the healthy pods. A service provides a consistent IP address and hostname that can be accessed from other pods inside the OpenShift network. Client components do not care how many pods are backing the service or how to connect to them. All they need to know is how to connect to the service. In this example, we see that the service for EAP app has a hostname and IP address. Clients connect to port 8080 on the service and traffic is load balanced to port 8080 over the two pods that are part of the pool. 
If we wanted to provide external access of our application running on OpenShift, another object can be created called a route. A route exposes a URL in the OpenShift cluster and provides the same load balancing capabilities that a service does, the difference being that a route can be accessed externally. If we access the URL exposed by OpenShift, traffic is then routed into the cluster and we're brought to the main page of our application. So this concludes the basic walkthrough of the OpenShift container platform. In this demo, we covered the basics of deploying an application from source code, rolling out deployments, and initiating rollbacks while explaining some of the basic terminology and concepts. My name is Brandon Cox, and please stay tuned for further deep dives on topics such as networking and storage.